All right. Come on down to the best session of the whole uh, NDSS 2017, System Security 2. Um, we have uh, five really excellent papers, and we will start with uh, Stack Bounds Protection with Low Fat Pointers, by, presented by Gregory Duck at uh, National University of Singapore. Hey, hey uh, thank you very much, and thank you for, well, to all of you for attending my talk. So, uh, as he said, my name is Gary Duck, and this is uh, joint work with Roland and Lorenzo. So, uh, just to uh, quickly provide a bit of context for this work. So, uh, back in uh, 2016, we published a paper in com Compiler Construction, which was called Heap Bounds Protection with Low Fat Pointers. And uh, what this paper was about was uh, essentially a, a new method for detecting bounds overflow errors uh, using a method which does not explicitly track bounds metadata. Uh, so in this paper, we were able to show that the, uh, the method is fast. So we, we get about a 13% runtime overhead for uh, instrumenting writes only. And because there's no explicit metadata, we also see that we achieve near zero memory overheads. And also, we also achieve a very high level, level of compatibility because if there's no metadata, there's nothing to break, essentially. Uh, the only problem with this uh, paper was that uh, our method only could protect objects which are allocated on the heap only. So essentially, uh, any Melic uh, allocated object could be protected, but that was it. So uh, that brings us to uh, this paper, which is called Stack Bounds Protection with Low Fat Pointers. So uh, as you can probably guess, basically what we're doing is we're extending the protection scheme from our previous work to also include stack objects. And to do this, it requires a whole new bag of tricks, which is uh, essentially the main technical content of this talk. And we're able to show that we preserve all the good properties of, of, of the first work, uh, namely that it is still fast, it still has near zero memory overheads, and it still has a high degree of compatibility. So uh, just to quickly provide a bit of motivation for this work, well, buffer overflows have been around basically forever. Very classic security problem. Uh, despite this, they still continue to be a threat. Like in recent years, there's been several prominent uh, bugs, the uh, heart bleed, ghost, and even very recently, the, the cloud bleed bug, which is a uh, buffer overflow, I believe. And in addition to that, the, the common defenses, which are, are widely deployed, are, are actually very weak. So uh, like even earlier today, there was a talk attacking uh, address space layout randomization. The stronger defenses do exist, but they, they tend to be rarely used in practice. Um, and, and this is mainly because of uh, the overheads they introduce, but also uh, because they tend to introduce compatibility problems. So OK, yeah, this, this problem has been around forever, and uh, we've over the years, many countermeasures have been proposed. Uh, so we can further petition this into essentially two main groups. And, and the first one is what I call indirect methods. So, so these are methods which don't actually aim to prevent a memory error. They just aim to mitigate the memory error. So for example, uh, address space randomization, data execution protection, they're commonly deployed. There are Stronger things like control flow integrity, code pointer integrity, and shadow stacks. Uh, these aim to stop uh, control flow hijacking attacks. And there's also data flow integrity for data flow attacks. But that, that's not what this talk is about. This talk is about uh, sort of direct methods. So we're, we're directly trying to detect the memory error. Uh, so so th this is otherwise known as bounds checking. So uh, just there are also many uh, bounds checking uh, systems out there. I, I think address sanitizer is a very prominent example. There's also softbound, which is quite famous, and baggy bounds and some others. Also low fat pointers, too. And uh, most of these systems work by 
tracking bounds metadata. So for every object, they, they essentially record somehow uh, the object's size and base. And then whenever there's a memory operation, we essentially instrument that operation with a check to see if the pointer we're using is within the, is within the correct bounds. So uh, within, the, within the bounds checking uh, systems out there, there's, there's basically, very broadly speaking, two main approaches. So, so one of them is called fat pointers. And, and the idea with fat pointers is that we uh, essentially replace normal machine pointers with a sort of a fat object which, which contains the original pointer, but also contains the bounds meta information, the, the size and base along with it. So, so the idea is that you, you, you transform the program, you replace machine pointers with these fat pointer objects, you, you pass them around, and then whenever you need to do a check, you, you can retrieve the meta information uh, directly from the object. So the, the alternative common approach is, is, is the shadow space method. So in this case, we, we actually separate the metadata from the program completely. So, so we put the metadata somewhere else. And then there exists some mapping from a pointer to the metadata. And, and then we can just look it up uh, using that method. So, so the advantage of uh, shadow space is you, you typically do not change the layout of the program. So it tends to be much more compatible. So uh, now there's a, now there's a relatively new approach, which is low fat pointers, which is basically like fat pointers, but we uh, we, we get rid of the fat. So so, so instead of a like a, a fat pointer structure, we're instead going to have a low fat pointer union. So this consists of the original machine pointer, but we also have. Uh, represented in the machine pointers bits, the size of the object as well, as you, as you can see by the size bit field. Uh, to, to encode the base, typically what we do is we ensure that all objects are aligned by its allocation size. So you can find the base address of the object by simply rounding down to the nearest multiple of the size. Uh, the, the advantage of this encoding is that, uh, well, you don't change the, uh, the layout of the, of the memory layout of the program, and also you, you're not introducing any extra space overheads in principle. So uh, in a previous slide, that was a, a very, very simple uh, low fat point of representation where we literally include the, the size field as like uh, verbatim in the bit representation of the pointer, which is kind of the obvious approach, but this approach does not work very well in practice. Uh, the, the, the first problem is that uh, on x86-64 at least, your pointer is actually really 48 bits in size, so the, the upper 16 bits must be zero. Uh, and, and the other problem is, well, okay, in, in the previous example, we're using 10 bits to store the size, well, well this is not enough. You can only represent a max object size of uh, two to the power of ten. So if you if you then try and increase this number of bits you use it for the size, you you very, you very quickly run out of bits you can use to actually uh, store objects out. So uh, basically, in our, our previous paper, which is the heap bounds protection, we we proposed a slight tweak on this formula, where uh, Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to take the virtual address space of the program and we're going to partition it into uh, several large regions. So in this diagram here, each, each region is represented by a box. So, so all the way at the front of the address space, which starts at the null address, the, the first uh, 32 gigabytes contains, for example, the text segment of the program. Uh, all the way at the other end of the virtual address space lives the stack. And in between, we sort of, uh, uh, we're, going to, uh, we're going to designate some of these uh, regions to, uh, we're going to, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to associate each of these regions with the allocation size. And how it works is that when we want to allocate an object of a particular size, we're going to allocate that object in a particular region. 
And, and, and what this does is essentially this is going to link uh, object sizes to regions, and this can be used for balance checking. So, so here on the right here, we see our, our instrumented balance check. And here on the left, we have the basic, the basic recipe. So uh, we, we can take the point of value. We can very quickly work out the, uh, the region index from that. Uh, and then we can just, from the region index, we can just use a lookup table to, to get the size. And, and once we have the size, we can calculate the base by rounding down to the nearest multiple. So uh, we get to the moral of the story, which is basically that, that this works fine for heap allocation, but does not work for stack allocation. And the problem is that the heap allocator uh, essentially has complete freedom of where it can allocate objects from. So it's not a problem for the heap allocator to, to, to allocate from a particular region we want to. But uh, on the other hand, for the stack allocator, uh, this is not the case. Stack objects are always allocated from the stack, and the stack must always live in one particular region. So uh, it seems that it's incompatible with our scheme. So essentially, th this is what we're trying to solve. So um, I, I wrote a list here of all the specific challenges, the specific technical challenges. So, uh, so in addition, so, so, so what? In addition to placing the objects in the correct region, there are some other challenges, like given the object size, we have to work out the allocation size. Uh, and we have to do this quickly, because this is stack allocation, and we want everything to be fast. Uh, we also have to quickly figure out what the alignment must be. Uh, we must place the object in the correct region. And we also want to do this without introducing any extra memory overheads. So. Uh, to cut a long story short, we're basically going to use a bunch of tricks, uh, lookup tables, and some, some funky virtual memory configurations. So. Uh, OK, so, so here's an example. So, so the first problem is that, OK, we, we have a stack allocation. So is, we have an object there, its size n. Uh, for this talk, we'll assume n is a variable. We'll assume the general case. Uh, so we have to figure out. In a few instructions, which region does this object belong to under our low fat encoding? And, and how we're going to do it is basically using lookup tables. So uh, we, we, here we're just going to define a lookup table which uh, is indexed by uh, some function of the object size. And this function is uh, leading zero count. I won't go into too much details about what it is, but basically what what we're doing here is we're using an instruction to get the, the, the order of magnitude of the allocation. And then using that, we can uh, use that as an index to a lookup table to get the concrete allocation size. So we can figure all this out in two instructions. So a, a very similar problem is, well, uh, to, to work out the the basic object, we need to round down to the nearest multiple of the object size. And, and to do this, we, we need all objects to be aligned. Uh, and actually, the, there already is a partial solution, which is that uh, compilers, modern compilers support this attribute aligned. And if you use that on a stack object, it will output a, a bit mask instruction on the stack pointer. So, so our solution is kind of just a generalization of this. So uh, using the previous uh, leading zero count index, we uh, simply look up the appropriate mask from a lookup table and then do the operation. Uh, so this is kind of the, the, uh, the more difficult problem to solve, which is fundamentally we, we need objects to be allocated from the correct region under the low fat pointer encoding. And, and this is what was fundamentally sort of incompatible with the stack. So, uh, essentially, the, the, the kind of the obvious solution is, well, what we're going to do is we're going to, for each region, we're going to have it, we're going to introduce its own stack. And, and then when we need to allocate the object, we're going to allocate the object from the, from the corresponding stack. So, so you get a kind of a configuration like this. So, so, so each of those boxes represents a region. Each region contains its own stack. 
And each time we allocate objects, we're going to allocate it from the appropriate stack corresponding to the region, which corresponds to the object size. So, so, so if you're familiar with the idea of shadow stacks, this idea is actually very, very similar to it. OK, to, uh, to implement this, again, we, we just use uh, basically lookup tables. So we, we basically just calculate a big uh, table of offsets from the, the real stack to the corresponding uh, stack in, in the appropriate region. And then we, we're, just going to, uh, we're just going to add the appropriate offset to the stack pointer. And that's going to essentially teleport the object to the correct region. Now, now th this, this is all well and good, but uh, uh, the, the main obvious problem with this is it actually wastes a lot of memory. So you can kind of see in the, the diagram there that the, the gray represents unused memory and the blue represents stack objects. Uh, the real world situation is actually worse than this diagram because there's, there's actually many more stacks. So this leads to a lot of fragmentation. Uh, so our solution to this is actually, is actually kind of simple. So, so what, what we do is there's several stacks. We're going to actually just map them down to a, a single physical stack. So, uh, um, so, so, so this is just using uh, a shared memory object, which is mapped multiple times into multiple regions. And it, it gives us a configuration like this. So uh, what this means is from the program's point of view, which is a virtual view, we have several stacks. But from the hardware's point of view, we actually only have one stack, just like before. Uh, OK, I, I think I'm running out of time. So just quickly, the benchmarks, the, the, the baseline without optimization is about 63% overhead, which is actually uh, kind of good for uh, a balance checker. Address sanitizer is about a 92% overhead. But w once we do the, uh, the aliasing of the stacks, it drops down a bit because of uh, greater locality. Uh, for memory, as you might expect, the, the memory overheads are very low. Uh, aliasing the stack decreases it even further. And we, we also evaluated um, if you just want to instrument writes only, which actually prevents a lot of attacks. And the overhead gets down to something a bit more reasonable, which is about 17% overhead compared to around 45% for address sanitizer. So, uh, well, essentially, we can summarize it as follows. What we're doing is we're replacing the standard stack allocator, which is uh, in, in the left blue box, with the sequence of instructions in the right blue box. And we're checking. We're not changing anything else. The instrumentation is the same. The, uh, the low-fat point encoding is the same. And, and that's all you need to do. Everything will work. Now you get uh, balance protection for stack objects. And we also preserve all of the desirable properties of um, low-fat pointers. It's fast, low space overheads, and it's also highly compatible. So uh, that concludes my talk. Thank you.